Hey, Sam. Uh, good morning for me hey, and mate. even good afternoon for me and, and good morning for you <laughs> down in Australia. Yeah, no, New Zealand. I'm based in New, I'm based New Zealand. In New Zealand, yeah. Zealand. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, it would be very early because they're still like two to three hours behind me. But uh, it's all good. It's, it's 7.30. Kids usually wake me up at this time, so um, all good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited for you to be on today. Um, we've been working together now for a little while and um, definitely producing some good content for Enterprise DNA. So I'm happy to kind of um, get you back on, on my half of the field and getting you on in my live stream today. Yeah. So this will be great. Yeah, no, look, really appreciate um, your, yeah, the, you know, the value that you're bringing to the to the team with our, with our partnership and, and loved a lot of your content and, and looking forward to you know, getting you involved in some of the other initiatives that we've got going on, particularly um, a new concept uh, that we're going to call the Accelerator Program. Yeah, really excited to, to get get uh, your involvement in that. I think um, that's going to be um, a, a really popular part of our um, part of our platform going forward. Excellent. Yeah. Um, for people tuning in, so Sam uh, is the uh, owner and founder of Enterprise DNA. Uh, I'd say it's a it's a great content platform um, and Power BI. Uh, expert consultancy and organization that does a lot of stuff related to it and in the last three four months i've started to actually produce a little bit of a few videos for them help them out with some of their conferences as well and um, as sam has mentioned doing some of their other uh, programs related to accelerator programs for certain skills within power bi uh, but i'd say definitely from a, my perspective you guys have a, a plethora of content out there uh, some some of the, the larger libraries when it comes to availability of things related to the Power Platform in general for a lot of the, the Microsoft stack tools and uh, courses and, and other stuff. So, um, but yeah, yeah. outside of uh, the, the little summary that I have, do you want to give a bit of background on both yourself and yeah. then as well for Enterprise DNA? Yeah, sure. So um, I started I started Enterprise um, about six years ago, really when Power BI was reintroduced in its current form. We, we all know it's improved a lot since uh, since it was first first re-released. Um, but in that first version, I was working in um, this New Zealand's largest company in the in the finance team, um, and I was always very big in Excel. And I started using Power BI, and I was like, "Wow, this actually solves all of the inefficiencies uh, that the, um, that we were experiencing, and like the whole world is experiencing um, having to do analysis and report and power." I mean, there's just so many inefficiencies uh, across so many different things to do with data management mm -hmm. and data visualization, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I, was, I wasn't that happy in my job at the time. And I was like, yeah, I always wanted to start my own company. And I was like, this is, this is it. This is like a big turning point in analytics. I really like it. Um, I had no business plan at all. I just knew that Power BI was going to be popular. It was going to be big. Uh, um, just you know, for a variety of reasons, um, you know, one being you know that that it was backed by Microsoft, which which meant that they were you know they were yeah. going to stop at nothing to make it a make it a really popular tool, uh, and so yeah, I just jumped and created Enterprise DNA. Really liked it. I, I I honestly can't even remember how I came up with the name. I just like literally <laughs> um, probably read it one time and thought it looked it sounded cool, so I decided to call um, the company Enterprise DNA, and then it was just me for a couple of years really. Um, We've got a lot of content now because we started early. We started on the content side quite early. I saw that, um, you know, just just like with uh, Excel, um, you know, when people search for things online, so so much of the time they go to YouTube, uh, and they um, yeah, and Google started putting videos in, in into the search uh, into Google search, and so I realized, okay, well, if we want to build our brand over time, we're gonna have to build a lot of content, put it up on YouTube, uh, and then that's going to build our brand awareness. Um, uh, you know, over the years. And so we've been doing that for like, for ever since, you know, pr pretty early on, like almost five years now I've had our channel. Um, so, you know, that, that's, you know, that's how we've sort of, it's that kick started our content um, uh, build up. And then, you know, we've built up our own, own, own internal education platform over time. Uh, and we've just kept adding to it. We've added some, you know, a ton of resources. Uh, we've added, a, uh, our forum is, is incredibly um, popular. Uh, and uh, we've got challenges. We've got the analyst hub, which is a technology, um, mm -hmm. and we've got the power tools. We've got, we, 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 I've always wanted to, I've always sort of been ambitious and I've wanted to be much more than just education videos, um, even though that's a very big part of what we do, but we want to be the empowerment platform for Power BI. That's how I think of it. Um, and that's how we've tr tried to evolve things quite rapidly in the recent, in recent years. You know, so we're, we're really trying to, as a business, cover everything, cover everything that a, that an individual or a business could want to, to really 
uh, develop high quality reports uh, that are going to make a difference within an organization. Um, so, you know, we do that in a number of ways, as, as, as I mentioned. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think as the, the, the service and the, the platform is getting uh, broader and broader, there is uh, a lot more need for architectural design and other stuff to not only like, you know, st start from the granular report and data set level, but also just in ensuring that the, uh, as a company has a grow up story, then there is not unnecessary complexity uh, or cost that gets associated with them as well. So I think uh, a lot of education on that kind of stuff is, is becoming a more, more of an on-demand need uh, for sure. Yeah, look, our, our offering has, has evolved so much. Like, uh, and I've always been very to um, taking in feedback and building things out, you know, based on customer requirements or based on our member members' requirements. And, and that's exactly what we've done. We've, you know, we, we, we initially started with Power BI videos uh, and then I realized, well, people want to need inspiration. They need, they need resources. Um, so we so we started developing those um and then we you know i could give many examples but, but you know challenges was another one project-based learning you know so we created the challenge environment um i saw there was some productivity requirements out there for, to speed up um, power bi development so we developed some develop the analyst type of it we're developing in uh, what we're calling the power tools now as well which maybe, maybe i could maybe i could showcase some of these things later um you know that that's that's sort of been my 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 sort of mantra from day one is that you know let, let's figure out what people need let's 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 really drill into what's going to empower high quality power bi development and then we've sort of just developed things around that um yeah exactly so, yeah that's 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 sort of sort of how things have gone and and yeah going pretty well after today i mean we keep we keep um we keep growing and and, and we really are um uh we, we, one of the big things we've, we've grown is our team uh, so, so from me, um, a few years ago, now we've got, you know, close to 25 to 30 people now. Um, and, um, that doesn't include all of the sort of training partnerships, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, we're really, really trying to be ambitious and, and, uh, and, and really empower, you know, all power BI users. That's, that's sort of, um, sort of, sort of a, a goal and vision I've had in the back of my mind for a long time. I like Empo empower BI. If you just add the, the, the M at the beginning of that ha has a nice yeah. ring to it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, do you want to maybe show some of the uh, things you're talking about, some of the, the content, and then we can also uh, eventually for, for the actual um, topic today, which uh, just as a reminder for people, we'll, uh, he's going to show quite a few useful external tools and other features that will help to create an app-like and I'd say an intuitive and smooth experience for report development. Uh, but I can go ahead and flip over yeah. to your screen. I see the, uh, uh, the yeah, sum sure. up, so let me do that. And, and maybe I can give like a little bit of a lead in like, um, yeah. as to why, what, why, why we've sort of got to this point uh, in our thinking, in our ideas around how to develop in Power BI. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this, this action like report development, it, it, it wasn't sort of a concept that we really had a couple of years ago, but after being involved in a lot of challenges, uh, that we've, we've, we've created being involved with a lot of our corporate customers and just seeing the. The challenges, seeing um, things that that hold a a um, piece of development back or an implementation back, um, we've really landed on this concept of application-like development. Um, you know, for for a variety of reasons, for a variety of reasons. Like one of the biggest one is just speed, just just speed um, of of development. Just trying to um, remove a lot of the sort of creative ambiguity that you can have with Power BI development. Also, um, uh, consistency. You know, getting mm -hmm. more consistent report development within organizations. Um, you know, there I, I cannot tell you how many times I've been speaking to corporate, um, you know, current customers and also potential customers lately, where their deployments have turned into a bit of a mess because you know everyone's reports looks different. They've got different themes. They've got different ways that they're trying to tell a story, and um, you know there is just a desperate need out there for more application-like, more consistency around how a report actually looks and. The, the the navigation experience, the theming, mm -hmm. um, so on and so forth. Um, it just brings more scale to what you're doing as an individual, but also as a, as a, as a team, as an organization. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of re re really, um, you know, we didn't always think this way, but this is this is definitely something that has evolved in our own thinking and 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 is really, um, uh, we, we are, you know, um, as, a, as a business through most of our education, we are, um, you know, we are pushing, we are promoting, you know, um for you know for those reasons i just described um because i think it just you know just makes the whole experience in power bi much more efficient um, and much more effective 
I agree, yeah. And like you, you said, the very commonly, uh, most of my clients want some way to standardize either the model, the report layer, but it's, it's have having some consistency and the reduction of needing to, to reinvent the wheel every time somebody builds something out, but also just to make sure that the look and feel is consistent across the development cycle, but also the consumption cycle for, uh, for the back end and front end um, consumers and developers. Yeah. And, and we've, we've had the real benefit in Pride DNA th specifically through our challenge program um, to actually see exactly what the medium person does with the power VR. Like we can really, we've really been able to identify what, what, what has worked uh, and what doesn't work. And, and on a, as a whole, like what are people, what are, what are, what are individuals producing out there? Right. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got this really good catalog of reports, some, some um, average, some like pretty terrible and some absolutely amazing. And we've, we've, we've been able to identify, okay, well, here are the key things that really set a good report apart. Um, and a lot of it comes down to this, this, you know, this, this application thinking, this application build, like thinking like you're building a web application rather than some one-off Power BI report or one-off Power BI, uh, like mm -hmm. PowerPoint uh, page, or, you know, just, just, just one-off ad hoc analysis. It's, it's thinking more holistically, more broadly about like what you can achieve in Power BI and then ways that you can scale that in your own, um, in your own development. Exactly. So, so maybe I can just touch on a few of these ideas and then just show you how they can be they can be replicated in many different ways. There's no exact sort of standard here. It's kind of like, um, there's just a sort of framework, I would say like a framework for application report, like um, report development. And so um, this is, uh, I've got a few examples here. This is this is just um, one of them. This is actually one I've, I've created, my, I created myself. Um, so this was uh, for one of our challenges. I think it was on insurance data, like insurance complaints. Uh, mm, okay. And the key things that, uh, I want, um, you know, a few of the key concepts that I want everyone to think about around this framework is, um, are, they, are these. So you always want to um, have, um, you know, consistent colors, consistent color thing. I mean, that's like a no brainer, but you you just like, honestly would be surprised how how many um, um, Power BI users still do not use a good color theme. So, you know, a good color theme, thinking, thinking in grids. So always thinking about uh, aligning aligning things in your report in a grid like format that grid can take um any number of um very like can be so many variations of that but just thinking in grids um always having a good navigation experience okay so this is really um this is this is this is maybe i would say even maybe a little bit controversial but i i feel like you want someone to feel like they are navigating within the report you want to ultimately avoid someone thinking that they have to navigate they navigate through pages by clicking like this right you want people to instead of that be able to click around uh, a report based on buttons or based on um a triggers that you place inside your report so again there's a number of ways that you can do this but um that's what i think uh is is, is something that really elevates your report and but but also you know really um creates consistency because the navigation you know it's 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 it feels and looks exactly the same as you work through your report and it's it, it reduces any um confusion as to how you want the user to work through your report uh the other one is uh, the other the other one is good labeling like really clear and good labeling around your report um so that you know again it's just you're taking the user through what you want them to see rather than them having to have feel around and really understand what you're telling them. Um, so good labeling is a good part of that in combination with, um, with, with good navigation. And then, um, so those, I guess those are sort of the main ones, like it's not, not really that complicated, is it? Right. Like it's just, it's just, um, you know, consistently doing those things. Well, there's a, there's a few little small things though, that I think make a difference as well, that maybe not part of the core framework, but, um, you'll see down the bottom here that we, we hide all of our pages. So, this is pretty consistent. Like when you see a good report, the navigation is what leads you to um, work through the, the, the analysis rather than clicking through pages. So hiding all of your pages and having one report page being your sort of your central homepage, um, that is a, you know, that is a, a superior way to, uh, for someone to experience your, your report. Um, also uh, extensive use of um, tool tips and bookmarks and uh, selections. So um, bookmarks and selections are up here, but using these in combination with tooltips uh, 
you, you you'd just be amazed at how much information you can get condensed into one page or or a few pages um you know you do not need to have these reports that are 20 pages long like 20 pages um of, of information you can condense it down to usually between three to five pages very effectively if you just think more about um the the application uh like building of your report um and then my last last point i have here is yeah it actually flows through that last point it's like just using the real estate on a report page wisely right um and so for example for, I'll, I'll give you one example here and maybe i'll show you a couple of other examples um you'll see here that there isn't actually many slices or filters within my report pages right so i'll go to any report page here and it, and it feels well there is there are, actually there, there are down there but i'll um what i mean in a second but in general there isn't too many um you know date filters or 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 additional slices that someone can make um and that really what how how i thought about this and this is this is just in general is mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm using my my real estate wisely like i've had i created mm -hmm. in this particular case i created a settings page where i could set the key attributes once you see here that i can i can literally set them once and then i used sync slices uh to manipulate every page in my report based on my selections here so instead of having these on every single page right which takes up real estate um, which takes up room you know i all i have to do is set it once and then that flows through neatly to all of my um report pages there and then to signify the date and to signify what we're looking at i've i've, I've been creative i've used some dynamic text and i've used a, a very small visualization up here so that that is just one thing using real estate wisely um and it's um and also i'll just show you a couple of cool little um uh, additional techniques here is, um what i've done here is i've embedded the text actually in an image again um i could have put this whole visualization in my but it, it is um a better use of real estate mm -hmm. you know if someone really wants to do this well they can just hover over here and um and they can see it you know, one of my favorite features is report page tooltips. I absolutely love those. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. You don't want to overuse them, strategically using them to get more into a more condensed, mm -hmm. um, condensed way is, is, is one of the, it is one of the best um, uh, feature releases that have, has happened in the recent, in recent years, for sure, for sure. So I'll show you a few other examples. Like that is, that is literally just one example, right? Um, but let's have a look at a couple of others. Okay. So this is again, this, this is different. Okay. A little bit different. And I, I'm, by the way, I'm just in, um, Power BI desktop here. So when you're in the online service, which we can maybe go to in a second, it really does feel like these really do feel like an application. You really feel like you're, you're in some web-based app, you know, you don't actually feel like you're in a Power BI report. This is a little bit different because obviously we're in desktop, but you know, this is just to show you that, you know, obviously things are built in desktop and then um are represented in, in in a in a custom way in the um in online based on how you manipulate things but the same thing here you know um you see here that um, i can very easily navigate up the top you know i've got a nice home page here and then when when i just sort of click through this takes me to um you know the key pages in my report um you know we've got a nice we've got a nice grid pattern here the colors there's no there's no extreme use of colors it's all very consistent um, you see, so a lot of these best practices are just being used, but obviously in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. We've got these nice buttons which take you from one page to the next, which is really simple and, and, um, and easy and, and for someone to utilize. Um, yeah, again, really, a really good example of, um, of an application-like report. I'll show you a couple of others. So here's another really unique one, right? This is like even more detailed, but look at, the, look, look at this, this, this cool... Um, uh, navigation on the left hand side like it's really just about getting your creative juices flowing isn't it like you can like i keep saying this mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. the time like you can literally create anything in power oh, yeah i mean anything like the, the thing you cannot create that that you could not replicate from a um from a design point of view now that was uh, maybe that was the case like a few years ago but now <laughs> I, I i i just i just don't think there's anything you cannot do what do you think the, about the, that? I would say the visually, yes, there's nearly everything you can build. Uh, some of the limitations that people do like to say occasionally from like Tableau and a few others is the 
certain features for either the, the native the native tables, which now custom visuals support, like Infra River as an example, does a, a lot of stuff that woefully um, the native matrix doesn't support. And then slicers, slicers as well could use yep. a few more features for what's supported, like being able to have uh, easier ways to do like date time ranges and a few other stuff. But I, I'd say like it's 90% of the way to what I would say I've seen the customers wanting who are migrating from other platforms. There's still a couple things left, um, but it, it's it's getting really darn close to like accounting for most of the art of possibles. Uh, and especially now, like, I don't know if you played around with it, the new field parameters that just came out, like that's one of the, the coolest things in like two years that's come out for Power BI. Right. No, I haven't actually. I did. I did. I did see some some comment on um, on our forum about, about that last night. Uh, someone was uh, using it and was raving about it, but I, I haven't personally used it. But yeah, definitely. So is, it, is uh, that just in the table? You can you can manipulate things in the table. Is that is that it? Or so 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 field parameters, and I'll, I'll link you to the video. And for, for those in the chat, I'll drop the the, the comment uh, the video in here in just a minute. I I just released it yesterday, but it, it allows you um, to do things that used to be really complicated. So. Uh, on a on a on a visual, you can change the, the the axis with the slicer selection. You basically create a parameter, and you like just drag and drop. Like I want product category, I want uh, you know country, and I want year. And I just drag those three in. Click click create. It adds a slicer to the page. You drag that same field into the axis on a visual. You click the three slicer um, radio buttons, and it changes the axis instantly between those uh, to display sales or whatever. So. Um. It used to be super complex modeling and like a, yeah. a, a custom table and inactive relationships and all this complexity mm -hmm. to change the axis. Yeah. Now it's just a click of a button. And the same thing with the measure. Yeah. You can you can add sales, budget, forecast, create, as a slice yeah. of the page, drag the same field directly into a visual. It just automatically switches yeah. between it. I don't have to make a disconnected table. I don't have to write the DAX. It basically is doing the complexity for me, but automatically. So that is going to be... I'm actually super excited and I'm gonna actually gonna make a contest about this in a couple of days, but I, I'm really curious to see what the community comes up with for creative solutions for this. Cause it's gonna be, there's, there's like, I think we've only touched the surface of like how, how many unique solutions using all this dynamic stuff is, I think that you can do for reporting. Yeah, no, look, that's, a, I, I, I get it now. I get it. I, I remember I created a video five years ago that, that was, that was very popular. It was like harvesting a slicer selection. And then, yeah. and there was this like um, you know convoluted way you needed to do it, and you needed mm -hmm, to do a switch mm -hmm, true mm -hmm. statement, and and so that basically is 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 um, making that um, redundant, isn't it? It's just yes, just, it again the, another, the uh, another option. My favorite comment on LinkedIn related to this is the the one downside is the switch the switch function in Power BI is going to become very lonely <laughs> because it that that's the, the number one reason is it's usually to change between measures uh, and and a few other things typically and. Yeah this is going to do, this is automatically going to do it. So I, I am like, you know, chef's kiss to Microsoft for finally releasing this. It, it took a while, but thankfully it's out now. Well, look, to me, that's just another tool. It's another feature or another a tool in the toolbox um, that enables you to place a condense your information. Like you just, it doesn't need to be so um, widely distributed over multiple different pages. You know, you can be far more condensed um, in, in, in terms of, you know what you're what you're placing mm -hmm. into report mm -hmm. pages and, and then it's just your creativity it's like okay you want to see um analysis of a different measure well you know there now there's a feature that enables you to, to change the measure dynamically in a report page just by a click um so that 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 is that is really fantastic um microsoft just do a great job uh, at listening they, they might not be fastest all the time but you know you have to say that they've listened to a lot over the years and have produced most of the things that people want like uh, I would yeah, have to give them a lot of credit for that. Yeah, they're, they're, in general, they are pretty good about the listening to the community and getting feedback related to that. So I, I definitely agree on, on that regard. Yeah. The things I wanted to show you, which I think, um, which I love, I really like um, when the, with these application um, reports. It, it, and it, it actually goes back to something I mentioned earlier. It's, it's lessening your use of slices within a page. Um, Slices, but just don't have them on every single page. Have some sort of like filtering mechanism like this, which I'll show you. You'll see here that when I this this um one was a challenge submission, by the way. Um, and so when I click this, you'll see that a lot of my filters and slices just in my report earlier. They're they they're not on every single page. They're in sort of like pop up box, or they're on a on a on a page by themselves. Um, and then you have this really easy way to click in and out of these um, settings. And I can show you many examples of this, but um, 
think this is the way you want to go for tick dates or um, just selections which are relevant across multiple different pages. Um, it's just a much superior way to use your real estate in, inside of a report page and also just to make your um, report look more professional, just, just, just more application-like. So I really like that one. So this is a really impressive report. Like I'd have to um, give a lot of credit to the developer. Maybe they maybe they had sort of like a pre-existing template and they've sort of reused it. We're really smart. We're really smart. Um, if, that, if that's the case, and, and that actually flows on to what I was I was going to mention is you would like it is actually really easy to find a high quality example, replicate it yourself. So if you that creatively inclined and, and you are sort of stuck on okay well how do i how do i actually build out this particular um this particular look and feel like how do i build my own report i, I really like it i maybe want to adjust the colors or something um, but how, how do i get that look in okay, the power yeah, bi now uh, i don't even know if this was always the case but, but you can literally copy across you can copy and you can highlight and group group and then copy into another report page just like that so if you liked this entire look right you could come in here and you could you know, do do sort of a selection like this uh, maybe select a few other things you could go group like so you could open up a new report and copy all of these things report so it, you don't even have to in a lot of cases you don't even have to dream up the the the, the styling itself like you can literally um, do a copy and paste, which I can just, just get. Um, I really appreciate it being able to like copy and paste elements, reports, and a lot of uh, items um, and objects on a report page between those. Like they, they added that a couple of years ago. Like that was like, oh, I'm so happy I can do this yeah. now and, and reuse a lot of objects. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I, I would honestly go far to, as far to say that not everyone knows this. Um, and the, the colors are a bit wonky here as well, but Again, that, that is not hard to um, update as well. You can come down here, you can save your theme in the view um, area. Uh, is it, yeah, in view, and then save you, save the theme out of this one, then upload it into your other report, and then bam, you've got a report that looks basically exactly like that. And then obviously you can go and make small adjustments if you want, but it's just, you can get there so much quicker than you think. That, that, that's, that's basically what I'm getting at here, is um, you, can, you can leverage, you know, this is why one of the reasons why we um, on Enterprise DNA's website, if you come to our homepage and then go to showcase here, we have this entire showcase gallery um, that you can one use as sort of like an inspiration area, like you can really get inspired about what's possible. But if you actually upgrade to our membership, you can download these files, you can download them all and literally copy exactly how something is done mm -hmm. and then just to make small manipulations to get it into how, how you want. So, you know, building these applications, I, I guess I'm just sort of hammer, hammer, this, hammer this home, is that building these is, is actually not that difficult. Like you can literally just leverage off what is already done from some of the best developers out there uh, and then, you know, easily um, place that into your own report. And, and you just wouldn't believe the time saving. You just, it's just crazy. Removing that creative ambiguity, as I've mentioned before, it, it, it just, it just re removes so much additional thinking and, and time around how to how to develop something that is you know really high quality exactly agreed um i'll show you just a couple of other really um i'll just show you like a couple of other cool cool ones that um that i think are, are worthwhile showing this this one's a little bit unique it's not it's sort of um it's based on formula one data but there's a, there's a lot of just like really cool application like things that are that are that i um really like about it that again are not that complicated it's not that hard to elevate your your report designs to this sort of level. Um, and so this was on um, historic F1 data. Um, and we've got some absolutely incredible examples on our, on our showcase that you can review. But in terms of this one, really unique navigation. Um, and by the way, I'm on the I'm on the web here as well. So so you you really will feel like a little bit more immersive this way with, with this one. Um, you see here that to, to go to a different report page is, is sort of been using images i'm not sure maybe the video uh, our faces in the, are in the way there but i'm in the top right of the screen sort of just clicking through the driver analysis and the car analysis oh there um, you go i so can that, move it that over really yeah that looks really seamless right so that that's our page navigation and then the other awesome feature here is is this this nice filter pane just so, so simple and effective right but looks looks awesome 
So like you can change, you know, the key things here. You mm -hmm. can change, uh, let's go, let's go countries, right? We'll go Australia, right? So we can, we can then click this in and out like so, and then we're, we're really drilled down. But think about, think about the real estate we've saved from this really neat like filtering mechanism. We can very quickly unfilter. So it, what do you think? Like, do you, what do you think? Rick? Do you, to me, this, this feels like an app, right? It feels like an app instead of a power BI, like a standard power BI report. It does. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, I would say the, I, I built them both ways. I like probably my second most popular video I've ever released is the filter pop-out pane like that one. Um, uh, the, the one consideration that I always have is the, is the performance. Cause then fortunately browsers are single threaded. So every, every unique object on the page requires load time to, to add them to that. So then I, I usually mm -hmm. try to just see the you know, uh, payoff of like, if we're doing embedded, that's usually the way I want to go just because it, it, it builds it into the website and allows you to custom develop the, the color and all that other stuff versus sometimes going with the, the default filter pane if, if a customer is wanting to just use an out-of-the-box experience. Bo both have their pros and cons, but the, that, that's usually what I, I try to weigh around and then have conversation with the client on is the, is the goal like a really unique app-like experience, in which case that's the only way to really go because you, you can customize that to the, to the nth degree. And nicely, you can have a slider. Uh, the slicer type for the slider range. Unfortunately, that's not available in the built-in filter pane. So uh, it, it's easier to set that one up, but this one just can be customized so much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's look. Here's, an, here's another example. You know the you know the the, the you know how I, I mentioned at the start. You know we we like to like really like to to, to educate on taking the user through the the story that you want to tell them, rather than mm -hmm. them selecting around different pages, etc. And so you see here that there's no way for me to select um, hmm. any individual page here in my Power BI report. I basically have to go to the page navigations that have been placed into the report. And so I'm navigating exactly through, you know, this, um, the, the way that um, the, this particular developer wanted to, wanted to show it to me. And again, this, that, this is very different it, it, to the one I sh showed you. Sorry. Is that using the new na navigation um, buttons there at the top or? Uh, Possibly, possibly, I think. Because um, I mean, they, they basically, the, yeah, I was going to say they, they output to the same thing. Um, previously, to get those, is yep. what you'd have is you'd have uh, two buttons for each one to have active and inactive. Now they have that yep. button, uh, the page navigation, like specialty button, which d does basically the same thing. But I will say, like, I, I love page navigation like that. It is a pain to have to develop those. So, from any developer, like having. Four pages is eight objects you'd have on each page, usually active and inactive or some combination of. Um, but now you just have that one master button on the page that has each one. It automatically has active and inactive statuses and all that. So like that that addition to create this type of experience, but like taking away 80% of the complexity was such an, a nice um, uh, pro to, to, to have to um, to reduce the complexity of development and then having to you know make all these custom bookmarks to, to, um, to, to navigate between everything. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, and one of the other things that I'll just mention here as well is, and uh, I alluded to this earlier, like one of the biggest issues that we're seeing with firm-wide implementations, and this is from, this is this is not just an isolated, it's like this is in most conversations I've had. You know, we, we've got to a point where a lot of businesses have deployed Power BI for two to three years now on average. Uh, and uh, most people are reporting, like it's a bit of a mess. Like it, it is, you know, everything looks different. Um, a lot of the architecting, um, is sort of um, a lot of band-aids around like how the data pipelines into into certain workspaces etc um, but the biggest you know one of the biggest things is just no consistency around the design and and report development and what some of, some of the more successful firms um, that I've seen have created um, templates that are application like that can be replicated over and over again they've almost got like a template file that everyone is is using and that, that template file has the navigation already built in so people so um all you need to do is maybe um add add the correct link on a on an icon or um cr correct use the correct um the the right amount of page navigations um, buttons that you want in your report page but the overall look and feel of the application you know, maybe the filter pane is already um built in you know maybe the the filter pane and the date slices are already um, uh, already integrated into the into the template, so no one has to go and redo that. Um, so the, the more that you can build up your templates and have the 
same navigation, the same theme, mm -hmm. um, the same grid patterns, like maybe even having a variation of grid patterns that people could use for their report, um, show, you know, for their report development, um, so that everyone is sticking to the same sort of, um, you know, same, same patterns in their reports. You know, that, that can, again, it can really speed things up. It, it can really um, remove a lot of, um, you know, ambiguity around how to design things. One example I would give of a tool that's already out there that kind of does this, but um, uh, is, 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 it is kind of, kind of like one dimensional at the moment is this tool called Numero. So they've kind of like created like a design, um, um, like process or like design, um, uh, I don't know what you call it. Like it's sort of like the theming, like design theme where, um, you know, they've got these grid patterns, they've got the theme already set up. They've got exactly how you would showcase, you know, a, a, a particular visual, like a card or a column chart or a pie chart. Like they have a set, a, a, a set sort of UX design that mm -hmm. you would put into these, um, you would put into your report. And uh, I think the idea is, is brilliant um, and can be easily customized. Like you could leverage that if you wanted to, but you could also design your own. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. And then you almost have these design assets that can be reused um by everyone in your organization um so you you have less variability in how something looks and feels to the consumer base completely agree yeah um so yeah so those are i, th I think those are sort of like my my main my main points around that i mean i i don't think you know i, I think i've sort of just really dwelled on the on, on the key things i don't want to just sort of um keep showing you more and more things and, and repeating myself but you know it, it's really you know it's it's really actually not that difficult it's it's sort of like the simple framework to power bi development isn't it like there's nothing like overly complex in what i've described like from what i you know i, I feel um you know um and you know when i'm when i'm developing something i just go into it with this sort of framework um i have a bit of a you know and in, 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 in this is sort of um related back to enterprise DNA, we have like an overall framework for, for development. Um, but you know, this is sort of like a mini framework within the reports and visualization area of your development, isn't it? Like, how can you, how can you really scale your efforts around the, the report, the creative side of, of your, um, your analytics and your storytelling? I agree. And the, uh, I'm actually curious if, if you know something like so so earlier you showed it, it looked like a kind of a stacked um chart like in for, from a developer's perspective i was really curious it, it was a matrix table that a, appeared to be a bunch of cells that were gradient colored with the last one was a gray like grand total that actually showed a data label um I, i'm actually super curious how that got made it was it was it was in one of your later on uh showcases that you were making uh, i i'm the guy who's like i, I love the dish but I'm, I'm really curious to know the recipe for it but that, that was a really interesting looking uh, a submission that you had. I don't know if you, you remember the one that you showed a bit earlier. Was it one of the ones in desktop or was it in the web? It, it was, uh, it, it had a black back or a dark background and it was a specialty matrix table that I believe was on the very bottom of the report page. But it, it, it basically looked, it looked like a custom bar chart. I think you showed the, you showed the formula 11, didn't you? I think. The, the the this formula one this formula one right yeah it was it was one of the the, the additional pages um that you sh that you showed yeah well they don't don't worry about it i, I don't want to have us uh, look, looking around for it forever but yeah the, the, there was it was a really cool and i just want to know how it was made um it, uh, yeah not, not in here yeah in this one this uh one. yeah it was a full page matrix table on the bottom that 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 looked like a stacked square um chart that was really really cool i've never i hadn't seen a matrix table uh, d done like that before it's just the problem with having like so many great submissions is sometimes it's actually hard to find the <laughs> the, the right one related to it <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah. Uh, well i'll i'll, I'll ask you offline it, it was a really cool visual though yeah. i, I it, it's inspired me to maybe want to do a video on it at some point yeah sure um no i can't i can't remember the exact one but yeah you're right i mean this there is so many great ideas um embedded into all of our showcases on our mm -hmm. on, on our report and that's that's why that's why we make the the viewing of them available to everyone we we, we think that um and i know this for sure like probably the one like the 
probably the best learning experience that you can have on our platform is is actually getting involved in the challenge is is actually that project-based learning right is, is is getting involved and practicing on some of the ideas that you're seeing in our showcase or you're seeing others do you know just practicing on something real world and um, just by actually doing it by getting your sort of hands dirty in a in a real world development where you're not going to break anything and you're not going to um, you know, you're not going to upset upset anyone in your organization. You know, there's there, there's just so many um, great things you can learn from actually doing it and getting involved in one of the challenges. So really recommend. We, we actually allow anyone to get involved um, in the challenge, whether you're a member with us or not, um, you know, to, to get prizes, etc. You do have to have uh, membership, but, you know, we want to get everyone involved and um, get everyone better at Power BI, regardless if they're um, a paying customer or not. Absolutely. I agree. And it, I... I actually like, I think it's a great idea. I've seen you, you guys do it quite extensively. Um, I know Parker Stevens has done it over at, at BI Elite as well. And uh, at, at some point in the near future, I'm, uh, I'm going to start up a contest for a couple of features, but I, I, I think it's a great way to just see the creativity that comes out of the community. Cause like there, one person yeah. only has so much creative juices, you know, when it comes to the art of possible and, and eventually, uh, yeah. I think also just giving people an opportunity to, to stand them up like this and, give them a platform to, to show their work, you know, to, to other people, I think is, is really useful as well. It's like, you know, in, a, in many ways, it's a pay it forward um, you know, uh, practice. I, I am I am the first and very happy to admit that I have learned so much myself from seeing what other people have brought into, um, into the challenges and into the reports. Uh, a lot of my thinking around my con this concept of application like report development has, has basically stemmed from viewing some of the best submissions um, and sort of seeing what works and what doesn't work. Um, you know, and things like, you know, quick something like colors, grids, navigation, themes, good labeling, hiding pages, um, re using re your re real estate in your report, like all the things I've mentioned, you know, they've all just stemmed from um, experience and, and seeing so many good, what, what were you, what you would consider good reports and what you would consider, you know, below, below average reports. Um, you know, and, and those things aren't, you know, get those right it's not it's not that difficult is it like it is, it is so achievable for for anyone i truly believe so i did i did uh frederico is um helping out in the chat so the report was uh was the goose star uh emergency challenge page one yep yep um oh this one here health services got it yeah here we go let's see gusta gusta is out of the, off the charts that is design. Um, one of our one of our community members, I'm just unbelievably creative. It's just crazy. Um, Let's see. Let me see again. It was yeah, it was the bottom one. Okay, so like, yeah, I, I saw that, and like, I'm, I'm assuming it, it's either. I mean, I'm either guessing it's a very customized matrix table, or it was using Charticulator or Deneb uh, is the thing that, that built the bottom one because it. I would imagine it could be yep. you could you could make it with with either or, but like that was one of those like, huh. I'm really curious how that was made. That's a that's a unique unique, unique looking uh, kind of um, grid bar chart. Yeah. Well, why don't whilst we're on the line, I can quickly show you. So this is so I yeah. use our users right. They can actually come in here, and we we enable download every one of these showcases right. So this one was called Health Services Analytics. Um, so if I just come here and I find Health Services Analytics, I can actually download the PBIX and we can. Um, figure it out on the on the chat. Um, here we go. Health Services Analytics. So I can download it. And yeah, this, like I, I'm 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 happy to admit, like I have just done exactly this. I've gone and I've I've seen an awesome idea, and I've been like, okay, I want that in my report. I come in here, I like look at the PBIX file, I I um try and like audit how they did it, and uh, and then try and and I, and then you just you just learn so like. There's no faster way to learn than just how someone else did it, right? Like, um, uh, and, and sort of, and then, and then trying to implement it, implement it straight away yourself. So let's have a look here. Absolutely. Uh, this just looks like a matrix table. Yeah, with probably some icons overlaid on it, I think. These are just small icons, yeah. Just small icons. So I would say there's been some conditional formatting, like a lot of yeah, conditional yeah, formatting. Yeah, exactly. Like and then the, essentially, yeah, you probably have something where that row is colored a specific color and then it yeah you, yeah. you basically i'm assuming then the font yeah, color the font color would be given the exact same color as the as the background but 
for the condition mm. where it's the the latest value and it's probably based off of a measure or something then it's yep. going to be give it a white color and then a gray background that creates the total column that's that's at the very end yeah that's cool. yeah, yeah I think, that's clever I think that's exactly right i think that's exactly yeah. right yeah um so so you see here that i think there's yeah so you see here there's different um different rows they have different looks like different so yeah look it looks I'm yeah. taking a snapshot of yeah. that because I, I, exactly. I love I love video ideas. If you actually have the the person's contact info uh, offline, I'd, I'd love to contact them because that's the kind of stuff that honestly is like it makes for a great self-contained video. It's like how to build how to do this with the matrix table. That is that's clever. I like that a lot. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll Gustav, here we go. Um, is is LinkedIn's is LinkedIn's here? But yeah, we can we can get his details. He, Perfect. He's, you know, the, uh, it's 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 just amazing. I mean, I think he's in Central Europe somewhere. Like, it's it's so cool to find these po the, these small pockets of just um, off the charts talent. You know, that, that that's been one of the cool things about our community. I mean, we've we've got people from over 120 countries in our community now, uh, and uh, you know, we've got amazing developers from Africa, from Central Europe, mm -hmm. from um, South America, from you know, obviously America. You you're like just everywhere. It's just awesome. Uh, people and there's 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 awesome power bi um um you know developers and art, almost like analytical artists you know there's <laughs> you know it's just it's sort of it's almost like a new medium uh for displaying your your creativity uh i you know and like the reality is right like if you really think um back sort of six years ago before I don't even really think like showcasing your creativity was possible like it is now. Maybe a little bit with Tableau, but I would even say Tableau six years ago didn't have this capability in terms of like customization. Um, so you know, it's 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 a it's a new medium for, for design and 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 creativity. Uh, and you know, I I would say that as a as an organization, we want we want to get more people to to that level right like not everyone is like as creative as Gustav or some of our like Mudasir is another one on our team who's just amazing um uh and uh Alex Badu is another um um and Federico who's on the line as well they're just just really um awesome designers uh but we want to we're, we're doing everything we can to empower everyone we want everyone to be able to create uh, this type of work um you know, and that, and that comes from our education one, but also our resources and tooling. Like, um, you know, we, we, we offer up um, all of these showcases so you can copy what's being done. Um, but also we have some, some tools um, around theme, gener like theme generators, a uh, whole range of color, uh, color related tools. Um, also automating some of the development to, to get you to um, your, of your reports much quicker as well. Um, so we're, we're, we're just working in, working behind the scenes and figuring out what we what we can do with the resources we have uh and and trying to empower this as as, as much as we possibly can across every power bi user we can connect with and i think it's like honestly just getting the the global community connected with this stuff is is fantastic and like you said it it i think it expands people's understanding of the art of possible when they can they can see community contributions like this yeah definitely definitely what are, what are some of the things that you have seen personally over time with with your interactions with the community which is holding back high quality development like holding back um consumer engagement and power bi reports as far as like things related to the community that's holding it back or uh, like uh, fe feature limitations like an individual more like an individual basis like what what is what is holding an individual who's who's working away in power bi from from generally you know from 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 developing more high quality reports i think probably almost a choice paralysis online like the, there's a lot of information out there a lot of it's conflicting uh, especially when it comes to reporting like for the most part there's pretty consistent you know don't do bi-directional relationships uh you know like you know measures versus columns like the you know the, the best practices for modeling but I, I would say that there's a lot more uh creative input that goes into what is the correct process for design so I, I do think it's hard for some people to yeah. necessarily find a good concise collection of information on how to build a proper report uh, so yes i know these features are available how do i utilize them consistently and and correctly so to speak just considering there's people who have so many different opinions of it online so i think that's kind of the issue is they don't know who whom to turn to necessarily for like channels or blogs or anything else 
as the you know the, the the correct voice to listen to when it comes to that just because it's more subjective yeah yeah that's uh, that, that that is a good uh, a good point and then you know so so maybe maybe it kind of data leaders or those 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 key team members to create a bit more standardization in terms of um you know what what users in a business are are doing so not everyone is off getting different viewpoints and different ideas like try and try and standardize more of what is actually going on um within um within your report or develop that, that whole um development stack like from your data architecting within a workspace uh how you design and create your reports how you build your data models within your power bi desktop um, um you um, your formulas and your dax formulas like even even down to that just creating and standardization will bring continuity and scale into and and, and efficiencies like speed uh, and, mm -hmm. and how you work within the power bi experience i agree uh, let me actually don't want to switch us over to this because i think we're showing a static screen at the moment there we go cool just yeah. give us a bit of a better picture um but yeah i, th I think the I, I think you're right on a, on on a lot of fronts with this and i i do think that th this platform is uh, you've done a great job of, I think, bringing in not only community contributions and the ability to to have people share between each other, but just providing good, uh, concise uh, training and educational material. Plus, all the external tools that you have as well is is has been pretty nice. Like the one that I didn't know existed until two months ago was the 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 theme customizer. Like that that yeah. that's probably one of my favorite tools that you that you guys build outside of the Muskogum, <laughs> as uh, Greg uh, likes yeah. to call it, but uh yeah i i am definitely for further utilizing them for sure today yeah no look we're, we're always we're, we are always trying to innovate i'm really pushing everyone in the team to to think as um, broadly as possible about how we can just continue to empower in, in any way possible around power bi you know and 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 going into that that, that theme generator is a perfect example is that you know this 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 is from experience of working within challenges even myself but just in talking to others is it's, it's just way too many clicks to manipulate a theme to exactly how you want it. So we created a theme which manipulated every in, like every single individual element within a report, like even the, down to if you want an axis on a bar chart, if you um, want your legend to always be off for a donut chart, you know, just, just every little detail, um, you know, you can manipulate in our own um, theme generator, which is currently in, in the analyst hub um an analyst hub app that we built uh, i'm thinking of actually breaking it out by itself because it probably deserves to be sort of just by itself in our platform because of how much um impact it can actually make um, um to to setting up a key thing and and the reality is like as an as an organization you should have this one master theme one master theme with all of the key colors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything set up exactly how you want uh and then very quickly I would say the, the levels of your the quality of your reports will go up by a, a multiple of, of factors like you know you everyone will just be having this to have the same um, colors which just by itself makes such a difference to the um uh, to the consistency of design um and then if you just maybe um had how to, how to think about some of the other things you mentioned like like templates uh, grid patterns navigation experiences like there's really just it's just not that much it's just it's a, a few additional things and boom just like that You've, you've got consistency, you've got scale, you've got efficiency. Um, your whole Power BI yep. deployment is going to improve like crazy. Yep, exactly. And I mean, I, I generally start, uh, most of my clients, I, I usually have like a, not a template file, but a PBIX file that is a template. And it usually, it already has the calendar table built into it, typically running off of like a Power uh, Query script um, that can generate off some relative date per, uh, field. And then the theme file's already been added and configured. So they'd you know, basically just add whatever data they need and then build out the report. But half the effort of, of the theme customization and use the calendar table, which is basically universal. Every, every model should have a calendar table um, has already been added into there. Yeah. So all, all of that, uh, all that headache has already been alleviated. Just so you, you've started from, you know, a quarter of the way to, towards the finish line instead of at the beginning every time. Yeah. Well, one of the, the just, just, just following on from that, um, one of the things that I've 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 been put, I've been really talking to Federico, who's our head of challenges, who, I, who you mentioned is um, is helping out in the call, but um, he's he's done an awesome job in, in revamping and revitalizing our, our challenges. Um, but then I, I had a realization after a lot of our recent submissions, and I thought, 
look, we, we need to, we need to create maybe a theme. We may maybe need to create a template um, with, with a navigation so we can um, actually showcase to everyone in our universe that even through our challenge format, we can improve everyone's, we can elevate everyone's report design uh, and report creation and report speed, speed in their development um, just by doing exactly what we're telling others to do by, by creating these, these um, by, by empowering this framework around application like report development. Um, and so that's something that we're, re we're going to consider doing like very, very soon is, is whenever we do a challenge is, is maybe having options um, for those who maybe aren't so creatively inclined or, or are just sort of beginning their journey with Power BI is that you can actually pick up uh, or leverage some of these assets that we'll create um, so that, you know, very quickly you'll be, you know, very, you'll, you'll, you'll have a, a really high quality submission. Um, you know, and, and, and really, you know, that, that's, that's just something that we are really pushing for, for corporates to do, you know, right. So, you know, to do exactly the same thing. Um, and so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's going to be a really nice evolution for our own challenges is to, is to remove some of those creative hurdles uh, for, for a lot of our um, participants. Agreed. And like the, when people can almost like plug things more into a template, whether or not that's a model or an interface, I think it re removes a lot of the scary complexity. It's like, I mean, it, you give a person who's not experienced with painting a blank canvas and a, and a palette of paint, they're not going to know what to do with, but you give, if you give them something that's paint by numbers, okay, I, I, I understand like where things are, need to go now and I can like, I can figure things out from there. So like there's a degree of paint by numbers that, you know, that you almost want to incorporate into Power BI modeling and reporting just to, to help people guide them towards stuff. And then again, uh, they usually drive for adoption and buy-in and a lot of other stuff that allows people to actually start to use and build uh, within the organization. That's that's a really good analogy, actually, and and it, and it reminds me of this. Yeah. Um, I watched this documentary. I watched this documentary maybe like a year or two ago, and it was of these like famous artists, or it was of um, a group of artists who designed um, these these massive murals and a uh, really um, spectacular artwork for high, uh, well, um, high net worth uh, clients. And what they did, like you would think, okay, these guys are just so creative. They're just like, just building these beautiful designs off, off the cuff and they're just um, um, painting, um, you know, just freestyling. And, and the reality was they, they literally on their canvas, they like put, put grids. It was just all grids. And then um, if they were trying to replicate like a picture or if they were trying to replicate something else, they had grids on the replica. And then they were literally just filling in the grids. They were literally just, just replicating little grid after little grid after little grid. There's absolutely no freestyle at all. And mm -hmm. you know, that, that's, a, that's just an analogy to, 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 to Power BI. Maybe you know, it's not an exact um, a duplication, but you know, it's, it's the same thing, right? right? If, you, if you can just sort of uh, pick and choose from the navigation, pick and choose the, the, the theme, if you can, you know, mm -hmm. we, we have talked about grids, but you know, having a range of sort of grid patterns you can use, like it's the same sort of thing. Like um, even the best artists in the world are using some sort of framework to make sure that their, their, their work is really high quality. Yep. And when I, I'd say like, you know, uh, a lot of the custom visuals like uh, uh, Inforever Zebra BI who, who have those plug and play templates where you, you put the data into there and both of them actually like broader, more broadly uh, integrate with IBCS, the International Business, Business Communication Standards. That does give you a paint by number scenario. It's we've already standardized what the colors, the patterns, the bars, the shapes, the design of everything should be. And we have templates for that. So like you just give us your data, but then depending on how you like it to be laid out, you pick from these and you know maybe tweak it a bit. But for the most part, all of the complexity is being done uh, by these custom visuals. And now you just have to kind of tweak and fine tune it a little bit. But it's a it's a really easy process to do that, you know, for like uh, five to 10 minutes and then you, you instantly have a report. So getting things like that, you know, more of that, those things native or, or um, third party into Power BI, I think will continue to help people reduce the complexity. It's the less clicks to insights and action, you know, is the end goal at the end of the day, right? Yeah, this is, that, that, that is a, that is a, a perfect example of, of just a, just, just general, um, ideology that I, I, I have within enterprise DNA is that is, is, is automation is just more automation around the, the development. I mean, we all know that we can develop things so much faster and, and, and superior to what we were able to do with Excel and PowerPoint and tools of old, right? But the more that we've got into things in enterprise DNA, the more I've, I've developed my own reports. A lot of the things we're doing is the same thing over and over again. 
Um, and so we're obsessed. We're absolutely obsessed with automating more of that, M automating our DAX formulas. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we, we've got we've got a first generation of um, of, of that within our new um, external toolbar that we've created called Power Tools, uh, in combination yeah. uh, in collaboration with Greg Deckler. Um, but literally, I, I I want to at the moment we can do singular formulas where we can literally do a click. Uh, and then say, okay, here's the column I want you to sum up or do a cumulative total or do time intelligence. Like you can do like things one at a time in quite an automated way, kind of like um, quick measures, right? But, 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 yeah. but a sort of better version. Um, uh, but I've, I've spoken to Gregory. I've said like, I want to be able to click through and be able to create 20 formulas like immediate, like just like with some clicks uh, and not have to, uh, and he said it's possible. So, you know, the, all these little things like, so that's just one example. Um, we're, we're, we're obsessed uh, up and down the, the development stack. How can we automate um, even the planning of your workspace, like the planning mm. of the workspace, which includes data sets and data flows. Like how can you, how can we create sort of a, a template you can use for best practices around that? How can we um, provide recommendations on like how to build your data model in the background um, of your report? Because still there's so like, it is ridiculous how, how, um, uh, a complex a data model can still be and I still see them every single day on the forum with um, our advisory our customers that we talk to like um, you know we want to automate that more so there's just no complexity there's no ambiguity there and then DAX formulas visualization just automation automation I think I think so much more of it is possible less clicks as you mentioned is, is, is the goal right is, is getting, yes. to, getting to high quality output quicker um, mm -hmm. and then and look, all it means is you can do more, and there's so much more to analyze out there. There's just, there's just, it just, it just continues to grow. How much you can analyze, how much you can optimize. Um, so all the automation is doing, um, and is and is being uh, made possible through Power BI. You know, the more uh, analysis and and uh, you know, better, you know, ultimately better decisions you'll be able to make because it'll be more informed. Exactly, a hundred percent agree. And I, um, I do think the at, at the end of the day, like that. The goal of a lot of people for this really is like the, you know, you want less time spent in development, more time spent on consumption and insight, right? Like, you know, it, it like yeah. people love to use that analogy of the tip of the iceberg where like, here's the report, here's all the complexity that goes in the model. That's expensive when <laughs> you have to pay for, certainly for me or, or, or any like expert consultants. And like, you know, I, I think that I would love to be able to shrink that. Like it's, you know, I, I, I would rather have uh, more time spent on architecture from, from the front end and then, uh, giving customers easy insights and not have to have, you know, 50 to 70 hours spent building each model and each report. Um, so I, I do appreciate the, I think the, the shift for no t low code, no code, that stuff's really been moving towards. And I, I do think in the next three to five years, there's going to be a lot more really useful features and like AI driven stuff that like, Oh, you, you just bring the data in and immediately, you know, I think here, here's five or six visuals that are just going to populate and uh, like your suggested um, ways to, to analyze the data. So it will take a lot of the, the, the headache of figuring that out and, and Googling what charts should I use because it's just going to make intuitive suggestions for you. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, there's, already, there's already tool, like pockets of tools out there that, that can really help all of these things. Um, uh, but, and, and I think that they're um, more now than ever um, you know, can be encapsulated in the Power BI environment, particularly with the external tools, um, but, you know, also the custom visuals that are available. So it's sort of creeping um, more and more into the Power BI experience, more and more automation, which is, which is awesome. Um, and, you know, we, we, as a, we as a team um, at Enterprise DNA want to want to move that along faster and uh, as fast as possible. And so we're, we're looking at each individual part of a development uh, life cycle and trying to you know, provide content on it, provide resources, mm -hmm. provide applications to, to, um, to, to really empower that, um, to empower that scale to, to, uh, and improvements in, in a Power BI deployment. Um, I was going exactly. to mention something else that came to mind. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I've lost it. I've lost it. But if I think of it, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to it. Um, I will say the... Oh, oh, no, actually, oh go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Um, the, 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 I was on a podcast yesterday um, with, uh, I was doing a podcast for our, um, our podcast channel called The Analytic mm -hmm. Mind. And uh, as I was talking, the two big themes for the future of Power BI and analytics came to my mind. And the two key themes are automation and immersion. I think those are the two biggest, uh, like big overarching themes that are, are going to come more and more into Power BI uh, from Microsoft's own development, but also from external partners. 
um, you know, just the fact, uh, all, all the automation things I just listed off, so I don't need to repeat those, but just immersion, right? Like we're already, we're, we're already seeing Power BI across um, phones, uh, tablets, in Microsoft Teams. I think, I even think it's coming out in, in, in Outlook very, very soon, right? Um, natural language query, uh, you know, just, just all of these things, right? They're, they're really starting to come together a lot neater, a lot nicer. Uh, and, you know, I just think that immersion is going to continue. I just think it's going to come more and more and more. And, and, and I find that exciting. I really, I really do. Right. Like, um, you know, I would, uh, we've got a lot of internal reporting ourselves, but this, there's, there's more that I, 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 I would like myself, like I would love to be able to wake up and, and, um, um, not immediately look at my phone, but after I've had breakfast and woken up a bit, you know, um, have, have a look at my phone and be able to see like my key metrics come and in, come into my, um, my office and have a look at my computer and really drill down into sort of more granular information. You know, what leads came in overnight? Um, what, um, you know, what, what, what's, what, what, what does that change in our forecast and our, in our, um, you know, in our, you know, run some scenario analysis, you know, it's just, it's just, it's all very cool, right? So it's, it's all, all super exciting like what can be done even you know i just get excited about what we can do like think about what some large organization can do i mean it's, it's just truly transformational and with more automation more and more immersion um you know i just think, think the possibilities are even greater than than what people can imagine right now oh i completely agree yeah it's the the art of possible is rapidly expanding and i i do think that there there's a, a good industry shift for a lot of this stuff that that's really continuously pushing towards like a third wave of of, of self of self service in, in so many different uh, aspects of the you know, both from from the back and the reporting and just the let's say the the architectural perspective with uh, with all of these tools. Yeah, what uh, just a question for you, Ari? Mm -hmm. What what are some of the key architectural um, techniques that you think you can use as a as a as an organization to um, be more be more scalable in what you're doing um, in the back end of your Power BI deployments? Like what what are some key things that you've seen or, or you think that organizations should do? Uh, one of the, probably the two biggest things for enterprise that I recommend clients to use, uh, number one is like Power BI Sentinel. Uh, that thing is huge for governance and administration. It's, just, it's so easy. You, you, it's plug and play, you know, you, you sign up, uh, you know, it's a, it's a software as a service, so it's a SaaS product, but it just immediately plugs in, it does auto backup, um, allows you to look across tenants, see every report that's published, every scheduled refresh, all consumption across it in a master like dashboard. It's super easy to do um, at scale and allows you to keep the complexity down. Uh, but then otherwise, uh, besides that, like tools that are coming out, like Matthias, who has the Power BI uh, PBI tools that allows you to, uh, to back up to like GitHub or uh, plug it into uh, Azure DevOps and deployment pipelines, things. Things that allow you to do automation, like that's the number one thing. Is you, you need to automate. You cannot you cannot scale while still having manual processes. So automation for both, uh, I would say the like management, and then automation also for deployment and scale as you add, start adding workspaces and keeping track of files and all that. I think that's those are the two like very essential things that are required as you're you start growing the the number of users, data sets, reports, and like artifacts that exist in the tenant. So those are those have been my go-to's that I recommend people to go check out. Um, for people tuning in, I'll, I'll I have I have a, a link to both of those that I can uh, uh, link into on on walkthroughs from both of the both Alex and Matthias who actually walk through the tools. But th th those are my two go-to's. Um, what about you, Sam? Well, I, I just I just have another follow-up there because um, I'm quite interested in, in in your view on this as well. Is is how how much should someone use data sets and data flows to to create more mm. scale in what they're doing? Because from the outside, you know, from, from using them um, a little bit, you know, I guess they remove duplication, right? They remove, um, they, they remove the complexity of a model potentially if you use yep. them well. So, so what's it, what, I, I'm interested to know what your take is on, the, on the, using those and how extensively those should be used as well. And maybe even some strategies around how they should be thought about and used. Sure, absolutely. Um, I'll say let, let's let's cover this and then we'll wrap up here in, in about five minutes, uh, just because okay. uh, we're we're getting close to time. But uh, for for data sure. flows, it, I I do think that um, they are a very useful feature to re it's to reduce redundancy. Like th that's probably actually a third third conversation is, is you should not have redundant artifacts or data in the Power BI service, and that and that can come from data siloing, which is the term Microsoft loves to use, which is the you know if you, if you have 10 different reports for 10 different teams that are basically identical 
uh, to each other, maybe with one or two tweaks, but it's refreshing the same tables and the same data sets with the same transformations. That's a 10x uh, uh, multiplier on the server load that you're hitting towards that every day. So you should have as few possible data sets as humanly possible uh, to service as many reports as possible. And like, there's no, you know, perfect answer of this should be one data set, this should be two. It actually has to come out where you kind of catalog what exactly between those two should we use composite. Like there's a lot of conversations that I can digress into, but overall you just want as few golden data sets with a lot of connector reports. That's a gold aim towards. And same thing with, with, with data coming out of it as well. Um, and, and data flows is perfect for that. Like if you have to do transformations and you actually have to have 10 separate models, do you really need all 10 of those models transforming this same table um, over and over again with like the 35 transformations needed to clean it up? That's also a redundancy now. Well, then you could have a data pipe, uh, you could have a data flow in Power BI that has that master process table being refreshed once a day that services those 10 required unique data sets from there. Same thing, it's just reducing that. So all of that really is the exact same conversation from a uh, architectural level is uh, reducing the redundancies of, of workload and typically trying to save your server from catching fire because every too many things are hitting it at the end of the day. Yeah, I really, I really like that. And 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 I would, I would, you know, I would guess that they're still underutilized um, features, really underutilized assets within the, the Power BI online service. Um, but you're right; like, it's, it's all about just centralization of your of your key data sets. And I would even um, uh, suggest, and, and I had this um, uh, on a recent client call, is that they have created a dedicated workspace in their environment for their key data sets. And there's nothing else in there. It's just mm -hmm. their key data sets. And then yep. that workspace is managed by their key admins or their key data um, specialists. It's almost like they've built like a tabular layer just within a workspace, right? Um, and then they just update that one key workspace because you can grab a data set from any, um, from any workspace, right? Like it doesn't have to be within the same workspace that you're, a public you're publishing your report so that's a consideration so that that, that can definitely cent centralization of key data sets that's a key that's the key thing i i agree and like there there's many features in the service for inter enterprise to store your data flows in one location reference them to another uh workspace store your data sets in one workspace and reference them so you can easily isolate and separate report and data and model layers into whatever configurations you need um, and then also including deployment environments but yeah most of those honestly have come out only in the last two to three years so like it, it has been good to see the, the number of, of ways to organize and isolate uh and, and keep separate like those kind of layers so to speak when it comes to the uh the, the power bi service yeah this would be a nice opportunity to to, to plug um just an upcoming event that that, that yourself and um, and Melissa yeah. Coates, one of the sort of architectural sure. experts, is um, is, uh, is is sort of um, coming uh, partnering with Enterprise DNA. We're, we're creating this report for this event called Architecting Power BI, and it's just going to be a, a one-off quarter, like a quarterly event, um, and and it's really going to talk through uh, some of these um, automated automated uh, automations and sort of scalability uh, things that you can do to the online service and to the architecting of Power BI. So. Yeah, really excited about getting you involved, um, and also Melissa, um, in that in the near future. I think, I think it's sort of maybe down for July. I think uh, is our initial um, uh, date at yep. the moment. But yeah, it should yeah, be some, sometime be... Uh, mid July. We're we're going to be doing that, and I'll I'll say the uh, yeah. she she's the the governments and administration uh, queen when it comes to that stuff. So uh, I'm I yeah. very much looking forward. I'm I'm sure I'm going to learn some stuff from her portions of this. So I'm I'm looking oh, forward are, to it. Yeah. She she wrote the actual yeah, I, I, um she she basically wrote the power bi roadmap like the the the, the adoption roadmap yeah. was primarily her so like the that official microsoft doc so uh for, for people like curious about who she is um and again i'll, I'll drop the, yeah. the the link in here right when after we finish the stream but uh know that she knows yeah. her stuff when it comes to this yep well i i, I thought okay we want to create i know that there's a need out here and i and i was thinking about okay how can we deliver this in the most effective way and i just thought why don't I just go to the biggest, the best expert in the entire world and ask them if they'll do it for us? Uh, and uh, Melissa uh, gladly agreed. And then I, I knew that I, know, I absolutely know from a practical sense, um, you know, with a lot of the, the sort of consulting work that you do read, that you'll you'll be able to add it, mm -hmm. be able to add a, a ton of value to that discussion as well. So, yeah, I, I can't wait to attend um, attend it myself. Um, so, yeah, I, just another 
another another another um, sort of innovative way we're trying to to empower things up and down the stack with um, you know with Power BI deployment. So yeah, n- another exciting initiative. Absolutely. All right, Sam. Um, we are at uh, time, and I do need to start getting ready for another call. But uh, I do really appreciate this. This has been right. fantastic today. Uh, thanks for tuning on early oh, yeah, morning yeah. your time, and I I learned quite a bit, and like I got to see some cool stuff that's inspired me to. Uh, get my creative juices flowing on on maybe some uh, aesthetics and design, considering some of those showcases that you showed. Uh, so thanks so much for this and and uh, for sharing everything today. Yeah, no pleasure, pleasure. I'm really really glad to be on, and and again, I'm really really appreciate the partnership that we've uh, we've got going on at, at, um, you know, with you, helping us out with a number of things at, mm-hmm. at Enterprise DNA, and um, you know look forward to that continuing. Um, just a just a, a quick plug. Um, we've got a really awesome summit event on report and data visualize reporting and data visualization happening next week. Just go onto Enterprise DNA's website and you'll see um, all the details there. But we've got about we've got 25 speakers over the entire week. So just talking about all variation of great UX design to um, you know great examples to you know whole whole raft of different things. So um, please please check that out. Really really keen to get you involved. It's 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 completely free. Um, there's 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 a small premium aspect to it for our members, but um, in general, most of it is um, most of it is completely free. Yeah, I'm dropping that link, people now. Just to the ma- main main website, right? Uh, yeah, the, the, we've got it sort of a, in our hero section of the main website, so you'll you'll see it there. Just click on there uh, click on the link there and um, register register in the registration page. Perfect. All right, I got that uh, into the chat. Um, so yeah, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Sam, thank you as well for, uh, again, for being a guest today. This has been great. And I hope you have a good rest of your morning and everyone else, a good af- rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, and night, depending on what part of the world you've been tuning in from. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships as well. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on social media to help pass on this awesome content and to help the channel grow. So until next time.